Hello there and welcome to the latest edition of Lunchtime Learnings. I'm delighted to be joined by Carrie Alliston, who is Head and Director of Lettings at Hunters. Thank you very much for giving up your time today. So thank you very much. So not only are you Lettings Director, um, you are on the TLIC um, board. You are on the Zoopla Advisory Board as well. So um, obviously you know a hell of a lot about Lettings, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm because there's a lot in the news about lettings. We've got the general election, which we thought was going to be in spring, but not anymore, um, according to Rishi. I think he's looking at towards the end of the year. And obviously, there's a lot going on with lettings with the renters from Thornville. But before we come on to all of that, tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you end up um, getting into lettings? Well, um Thanks for inviting me on, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, I My journey with Hunters, I'll probably start there. I started here in 2003 um, on St. Patrick's Day. And um, yeah, so and I started in this actual office where I'm sat right now, which is now a meeting room, um, in, in our Leeds branch as a Lettings Neg. And um, I've done relocation and things like that beforehand. Um, and I just loved it. I just love lettings. Anyone that knows me will tell you, literally, I could bore you all day long just talking about lettings and how fantastic I think it is. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I started here as a lettings neg. And then I, if, a couple of years later, I went over and managed uh, Manchester lettings branch. And then kind of over time, I just got I love managing a branch and I love letting properties and listing and the fast paced, you know, atmosphere of lettings. But I'm also quite nosy and I like getting involved in things. So I started getting involved in other parts like compliance, processes. I love a checklist. Um, so I started doing a lot of that for hunters back in the back in the old days. So I'm talking about like 2006, seven, eight. And then a few years later, I started getting involved when we grew as a franchise business, got involved in the franchising team from the lettings perspective. And I loved that. And I still love doing all of that, going out and sharing information, tips, tricks um, about growing businesses, how to deal with problems, how to, to, to do it the best way and to do it the safest way. I know that part of it's a bit boring, but it is so important. Um, and then, so just over time, uh, I did all of that. And then I was made Lettings Director in 2018. Um, so, and what I do now is I still look after, we have uh, hunters, we have a number of branches that we still own. And then we also have the franchise network. So I look after the branches that we own in the North. Um, so I spend a lot of time with them, making sure that we're hitting targets and we're growing our portfolio. But I also deal with all the franchisees. So I get a lot of phone calls or emails with queries and questions, some of which are dead easy for me to answer because I've been doing it over 20 years. But more often than not, it's they come to me because they really don't know the answer. So there's some quite interesting questions that I get on scenarios that people are having to deal with. Um, so I don't always know the answer, but I'll go away and find it out for them if I can and um, try and help out the franchisees. I go and visit them still, talk about how they can prospect better, how to dig into their databases. You know, we've all got a lot of data that we probably don't realize that, we, that we've got there and we're not using it effectively. So we go through that. And I helped them with a lot of tech things, I suppose. Uh, Glynis, who was the MD, her one of her little phrases is use technology as the accelerator. And I'm totally on board with that. Use it to make us have more time to talk to people because that's what landlords want, is us to talk to them. And as you can tell, I haven't come up for breath then and I just went off on one, didn't I? <laughs> Well, I'm just writing notes here, so I've got so many questions to ask you out of all of those things. But let's rewind a little, and thank you for okay. sharing all that. Congratulations on um, your 20-year anniversary um, last year. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, and obviously, where's your passion come from, your passion for lettings? 
Um, I don't know, really. I don't know where it, it's come from. I think when I first started in this branch, it was it was quite it was a small branch from a lettings perspective, but there was huge opportunity in Leeds. It was back in the day where they were building apartment blocks faster than you know you can imagine. And me and my colleague who I worked with, Maz, we just wanted to be the best. We wanted to be the best office in Hunters. And we wanted to just smash every target that we were given, make loads of money for the company. And um, yeah, um, that's what we wanted. And, you know, we just we just loved it. I'd go out, I mean, got to remember the timeline I'm talking about a long time ago. You know, you'd go out on a viewing and I'd come back and I'd have, you know, 10, 15 new sets of keys just sat there from landlords who had been buying as investors and they wanted us to put it on the, put the property on the market straight away. You know, there was no question. And so we just, we just made hay while the sun shines. I and mean, we just loved it. It was it's such a buzz, you know, getting a listing, getting it let, you know, we just, just loved it. So you talked about being the best. So what does being the best look like in your eyes? Well, now it's different. Um, you know, we, people will often will say, you know, where, they ask me where my hunter's tattoo is. You know, I don't have one, by the way. Um, but, you know, I wanted to come to... You just have blue blood instead. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, I wanted Hunters Leeds Lettings to be better than all our competition in Leeds. And then I wanted Leeds Lettings to be better than York Lettings or Harrogate Lettings. Um, but, and, but being the best means being able to grow the business, but also to maintain it. It's no point putting on loads of stock that is is no good or is not right or where you don't look after that customer. So there's no point having 500 fully managed and having 400 unhappy customers. So it's about that. For me, it's about the balance of growing our portfolio, but with happy customers um, and having good relationships with them. Okay. I'm going to come back to that because I want to go back to when you went from a, a negotiator um, to running a branch in Manchester. So what were the lessons that you learned from going from a negotiator to running a branch, managing people after being managed yourself? Yeah, that was um, probably my steepest learning curve, if I'm honest. I think it's um, going from a different, although the, the market's similar, city centre style living, it's, um, it's different. Obviously, Manchester is so much bigger than Leeds. Um, but what did I learn? I learned that you needed to have patience and to listen. Um, you know, you need to to listen to people. I need to learn how to 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 share your knowledge without being patronising, and to instill the same enthusiasm that we have in Leeds in other branches um, and that when you're in a really really small team that's worked together for a long time trying to replicate that it's not you know you can't just do it instantly it takes hard work commitment um, and persistence good so how did you get that consist uh, that commitment that buy-in from your from your new team um by showing that just because you've got the manager role, title you still get your hands dirty because it's important to to show lead by example i think it's probably the phrase i do it now when i'm in like i'm in leeds today I'm sat in here talking to you, but actually I'm sat in the other room most of the day on the front desk with the team. And I do the same in all the branches that we own in Harrogate, York. I do that, sit on the front desk. And if the team are out on appointments or they've nipped to the kitchen to make a coffee and a customer comes in, there's none of this, 
oh, just can I can you just wait? I'll just get stuck in, answer the phone, register applicants. I mean, some of the branches do they do shiver. They're like, oh, don't let her talk to customers anymore. But I still like it. <laughs> Uh, I like that. I like that. So you talked about also your passion for listing. What do you think makes a, makes a good letting lister then? Um, it's all about listening again. You've got to listen to what the customer needs are and sell to those needs. Uh, I think you've got to remember that every customer is different. When you're talking to landlords, you've got to find out what their situation is. is it, are they accidental? Are they a small portfolio? Are they just getting into it? Are they a big, you know, portfolio landlord? You know, finding out and being interested in people is key in terms of that because there's no point me being a, ro a robot on a listing. We get trained really well at Hunters, but I can't, I can't, pigeon the whole training to every single landlord it just wouldn't work so it's about knowing knowing your stuff and selling to the to the needs of that customer okay also but with lettings i suppose it's different with sales with lettings you've got to be able to talk to those landlords about the difficult bits as well you've got to be able to discuss um gas safety eicrs overseas landlord tax and make them sound interesting okay well look you've you've talked about knowledge a few times here you've talked about listening so how do you think you become a good listener a good communicator um just through experience i think you have to you have to make the mistakes you know i you know, when I talk to franchisees now or, or our, our own teams, you know, it's you share the things where it's gone wrong for you. You have to, you know, you have to be humble in terms of, well, I did that like this once and it went really wrong, so I'm not doing it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think it just comes from knowledge and it's about looking in the mirror as well. You know, what what am I doing? You know, how am I performing? Am I asking people to do it one way, but then I go and do it another and that's, that's not right. It's about, you know, it's, it's a journey of time where you learn yourself, hopefully pass some of that on. Okay. So you talked about maintaining and growing um, your portfolio. So again, um, I don't know, you know, from what I'm hearing from the lettings market up and down the country, um, and I know my son was looking, that um, he would go and there'd be about 20 or people looking at every property and rents were going absolutely crazy. Um, how are you finding, and also on the seller side with, you know, with what's going on on the rental side, a lot of landlords I'm hearing are selling as well. Um, how are you finding that? How are you able to grow and maintain with what's going on in the current market as well mm -hmm. well there's lots of there's no silver bullet um and it, it comes again back to the individual customer and it's about talking to those customers and finding out what they what they need from us and what do they need for themselves in terms of growing you know, a lot of the branches that we own and throughout the, our franchise network comes back to the the customers that we've got sat in the database that we haven't talked to. Um, one of the things I promoted as, well, as a Christmas task, if you like, was make sure you do your annual reviews. Don't just ring landlords up trying to flog them anything. Ring them up and talk to them about their investment. How is it performing? Give them an update. You know, tell them about the tenancy that we're looking after. Stay in touch with them, give them regular updates. We do a lot of regular updates to our even tenant fine landlords. That's just about the market locally. We're not trying to sell them anything, but we're telling them what's going on around in whichever town you're in. Um, and, you know, when landlords are talking to us about selling, you know, be an understanding about why that is. What can we do to help? Um, obviously, from a lettings perspective, we hold on to it as much as we can, 
But of course, those landlords, you know, it, well, it's their needs that we have to, you know, look after when it comes to it. Um, and yeah, you're right. I know we have a lot, like uh, I sit in the, your office, I was there on um, Tuesday and, you know, I could hear people trying to book in for viewings and they've already got 20 people and the property's only been on the market for half an hour. A lot of ours did, we're obviously doing block viewings. We offer to do a lot of virtual tours still for people that can't come on that block viewing. So it's understanding the customer and flexing where we can to make it work. Okay, so I love the fact that you're talking about annual reviews because I think most landlords and definitely most sellers or buyers, previous buyers go into witness protection and they never hear from their letting agent or their selling agent or who they bought it through. And it's scary. And, you know, what interests me is, you know, if people have a financial advisor, you have a yearly checkup. If you have a car, you have a yearly service on your car. You know, if you've got glasses, you go back every year. If you've got a dentist, if you're good, you may go back every year. And yet, you know, especially with a, a, a landlord, and you talked about different types of landlords, actually, they would want to know what's going on with their property portfolio and what's happened. So, you know, why is it you think that most agents aren't doing it and allow everybody to be in witness protection? <laughs> Because they're busy on to the next thing. You're just busy on to, you're constantly thinking about your next listing, your next viewing, your next let. And we, I think a lot of agents forget about that portfolio of customers that are paying us every month to do all the work that we do, collecting the rent, doing the management visits, dealing with maintenance. But also we are there as their investment advisor, if you like. And I'm not saying that we're perfect and that we've done this for 10 years straight. Absolutely not. But it is something that I've introduced in the last couple of years because landlords love to talk about their properties. Well, of course they do. They want to talk about letting or renting, whatever. So, you know, it's important for us to, to give them a quick call or if you can't give them, a, if you can't get in touch with them, I've made a template, which is like a little review document where they can give the landlord some information and zap it over on email. But then they've heard from us about something else other than, oh, by the way, your boiler's broken. Couldn't agree more. I was yesterday I was doing some work with uh, an, an agency in East London. Um, and just to demonstrate, just asking him simple questions and asked him whether he was a landlord. And he said, yes, my family is. And I said, can I ask you, you know, how many properties I call it an empire? You call it a portfolio. Um, I said, how many properties do you have in your empire? And he said, as a family, we tw we've got 20. Just the really simple questions. And have you got an appetite to, to buy any more? Definitely. And then I said to him, um, this is going to be a really personal question, so don't get offended, but do you have any friends? And then I said, friends, colleagues, um, colleagues, neighbours um, and family. And I said, he said, yes, obviously I do. And I said, well, can I ask, are any of them landlords as well? And he said, yes. And I said, can I ask how many? So he said, well, you know, about 150 people that are landlords. And I said, that's fantastic. And um, do you, how many of them do you think will be interested in maximizing their investment? So he said, well, every single one of them. So I said, that's fantastic. So when was the last time their letting agent offered to take them for a coffee to maximize their investment? And he said, never. I said, yeah. well, do you think they'll all be interested in going for a coffee? And they said, yes. So I said, well, thank you very much. I'm going to ask you for all their names and numbers. If I was that letting agent yeah. and, and demonstrate it. And I think your point is spot on. You know, um, you're, I call it a customer base rather than a database. But there's, you know, it's a data bank. There's absolutely gold sitting in there. And there's so many landlords that are sitting there that are actually that have bought through other agents that you don't know because you've never asked a question. Um, yeah. You know, and it costs a lot of money to get a landlord, but actually you've got so much, so many people sitting there and your hour of business generation um, on a daily basis is gonna make massive, massive opportunities. So, you know, if you're not doing that already, 
um, thank you for sharing that because there's definitely gold in that. Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. So um, you spoke about, or I saw, I told about the TLIC and the Zoopla Advisory Board. So can you tell us a bit more about those, what they're about? Because um, a lot of people may not know what TLIC is and what it actually does and what you're doing to advise Zoopla and Lettings. Yeah, so the Lettings Industry Council, um, I've been with them for quite a number of years and the, the, the aim is to, to get people together and not to be, like, I hate saying this phrase, back in the day, but back in the day, you know, all agents, we all hated each other and that's just not right. And um, what TLIC does is it brings a lot, all the agents together in a room and suppliers to our industry to talk about what's important, what's happening in the industry, mainly from government, um, to, to try and help guide government in terms of you, they get a lot of information through the media and through certain uh, bodies, if you like, that's one-sided um, and didn't used to ask the industry for their input or, or, their, or their side of things. So that's where it started. So, you know, we, the aim of the game really is to provide government with real information about what happens from our side of the desk, if you like. And I think one of the things, one of the reasons I got into it with, with Glynis was because I'm, I am so operational um, and it's, you know, I think it's important to remember and to, to be able to put forward in a discussion what negotiators are really doing today. You know, how is the, the market or what government do, how is that affecting the, the, the job role of a negotiator or a valuer or someone that's having to do that deals with maintenance? I think going back to what I was saying about being on front desk, I'm there because I need to hear what's happening every day in real life, not in a, you know, in my off corner office, which I don't have. Um, and I think that's hopefully what I bring to to the Zoopla Advisory Board and TLIC is is that real day to day. Well, this is what's happening, and you know these are these are the things that this is how it works now. Which even for me is massively different to how it worked. You know, when I first started, if I look at what an inventory looked like when I first started in two thousand and three, and what an inventory looks like now, you know, it's crazy. So hopefully that's what I'm bringing to that. And then those, you know, those meetings, those committees put forward information that's useful to government. Okay. I won't comment on what they actually use it for or do. Um, that's, that'll be for another podcast. Another one. So <laughs> you, talk, you talked about tech being an accelerator. Um, what, you know, what is out there that people should be using or should be aware of? Well, we, there's a lot of repetition in terms of administration when it comes to lettings. So we, you know, we use a lot of things there. So we use Payprop for our client accounting. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's fantastic. It speeds the process up like you wouldn't believe. And what that does is it allows if the team, the negotiator, if you've got someone in accounts, however your team works, it allows them more time to be proactive. So whether that's chasing arrears or dealing with um, main incoming maintenance, it can be you can be more proactive. You've got more time to spend talking to customers, allowing the tech in the background to do its thing, which is automated. And then we use, we use things like fixed flow. So fixed flow is brilliant, not only because it helps the tenants report maintenance better, but it helps us when it comes to things like the Deregulation Act. If it's been logged on fixed flow properly, we've got a really good audit trail if there was a problem further down the line. So, you know, it's things like that. We use pre-tenancy platforms because of the admin. It's It's the same but different every time but there's a lot of pre-tenancy platforms out there 
that can do the automation in the background, allowing the negotiators to, to speak to more uh, applicants, do more viewings, allowing that admin to be happening in the background, giving me more time to, to ring that landlord with an update, you know, all that sort of stuff that you want to do. Okay, lovely. Thank you. So a couple of final questions, because I'm very conscious you need to get back on that front desk and um, find some more landlords today. Yeah. Uh, who inspires Carrie? Um, oh, I don't... Lots of people, actually. I think, you know, were my, during my time at Hunters, uh, I've worked, I worked really closely with Glynis. Um, you know, I know it's hard to believe because all I've done is talk for like how long, we've, 25 minutes, but I used to be quite shy. Um, and but Glynis challenged me to be more confident and got me to do things that she knew I didn't want to do or I didn't think I was brave enough to do, but maybe do them anyway. So I admire her for, for that, for pushing me. And also from when it comes to people to like like Glynis, you know, her her ethos is it's all about the customer. That's what we do. Um, that's why we're here, you know, is to look after the customer. So it's it's people, it's people like that that you know I admire. Okay, lovely. I just want to touch on something you said because that's pretty similar to you, shy, retiring, very quiet, wouldn't say boo to a goose. Found it very hard to get out of the comfort zone, but that's where obviously all the magic happens. And I'm sure there's going to be people that are watching this that are listening to this that are also shy um so what tips can you give to people to get out of their comfort zone because that's where the magic happens um it's all about for me it was about knowledge so one of the reasons why i was so shy i remember my first day in this office i had to ring up this portfolio landlord because his washing machine was broken and I didn't, I was petrified. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I had to spend time figuring it out. I had to prepare for my call and know what I was going to talk about and what my end of, what was my end game before I made that call. So I think it is about knowledge. I think if you are talking about anything, if you try and sell something, whether it's a service or an add-on or whatever it might be, if you don't sound like you believe it, then they won't believe it. So you've got to know the ins and outs. Funnily enough, just as a little aside, when I was in York on Tuesday, we had two people in doing work experience. And at the end of the day, the we asked them, well, not me, it was the lettings manager said, do you fancy doing an applicant call? So ringing up an applicant from the system to see if they're still looking for a property. And they were all like, oh, Anyway, but they did it, and but they were so nervous, and they were nervous mostly because they thought everyone was listening to them. Now, in a real life scenario, when you're on the phone, no one is really listening to you, are they? And I think it's important to know that. Um, but they did really well on their calls. Um, they were a bit nervous, um, but they did the calls. They did four actually. Um, but it's it's but it's knowing what to say, like. And what is the reason for this call that you're making? If you don't know why you're doing something, it's going to go wrong. And that is going to dent your confidence for the next time. 100%. Well, on that note, thank you so much for your time. Really, really okay. grateful. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that, please? Uh, well, my email address is quite easy. It's carrie at hunters.com or I'm on LinkedIn, Carrie Alliston. So, yeah, get in touch. Do you want to talk about letters? Well, thank you. So thank you very much. Really grateful for your time. Yeah, um, thank you. Really for wish, wish you a successful 2024, growing and maintaining um, that portfolio empire kingdom, whatever you want to call it. Um, and thank you very much. So yeah. thank you very much for watching and listening. And if you like it, please share it, comment, get it out there, because um, there's loads of gold in here. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you.